The U.S. visa form asks you if you are planning to commit acts of terrorism or genocide. Why? This ensures that would-be terrorists are also guilty of lying on a U.S. visa form. Putting them in real trouble. Basically it's because depending on circumstances you may only be able to be investigated on a state level if suspected of terrorist-related offenses. By including this and similar questions it means you have fraudulently obtained a visa which is a federal offense. Allowing agencies such as the FBI with much larger resources to open investigations into you. Additionally, visa fraud may present a greater punishment than terrorist offenses depending on what they are. Similar to how Al Capone was sentenced for tax offenses and not other crimes as they wouldn't have put him away for long enough. It's relevant because immigration law usually excludes people who have committed terrorism, crimes against humanity and the like. Although sometimes they can get a waiver for it, there are plenty of examples of people who committed terrorism in other countries who then might seek admission to the U.S. Sometimes we don't even think of them as bad people, such as Nelson Mandela. Those people want to answer honestly so they can get a waiver and get legally admitted. Even though some people might be dishonest, it's helpful to establish the fact they lied when applying for their visa. This is because crimes they committed abroad often aren't punishable in the U.S. For example, the naturalization of Nazi war criminals has been revoked because they lied on their applications. Or, even if someone was planning to commit their crime in the U.S., they might not have completed the crime. But they're still guilty of visa fraud. Perhaps the burden of proof to satisfy Homeland Security that you are terrorist is less than the burden of proof to satisfy the legal courts. Let's say that you are suspected of being a terrorist to be found guilty in trial. The state has to prove beyond reasonable doubt, which may be difficult. However, perhaps Homeland Security does not need that. So, if they suspect that you are a terrorist or if you are accused of being a terrorist, that might be legally enough to say that you lied on your visa application. And thus that would allow them to revoke your visa. This way, there may not be enough evidence to convict you in trial. But they can still legally deport you. I would imagine this would garner another charge if they were to commit an act of terrorism or genocide for falsifying documents or something similar. So they can make sure to put them away. IDKY but this reminds me of on South Park when Jimbo is trying to sneak fireworks in from Mexico. Officer, are you carrying any firearms or explosives sir? Quote. Jimbo, yes. Damn it I always get that question wrong. Quote. What would happen if I were to write yes? It's like when banks ask you if you plan on committing racketeering or money laundering. So they can say to you, you committed acts of terrorism or genocide, when I specifically asked you not to. Quote. When I was young the local bottle shop would give you a little form to fill out if you looked underage and had no ID it said something along the lines of, I declare I am above the age of 18. My birth date is. Signed. You'd fill in the blanks and buy your booze. It was a pretty rural area in Australia. One day a mate of mine had drawn the short straw and got sent to the bottle shop to buy us underage. Pissheads a carton of beer. In he goes. Gets the beer. Gets asked for ID. Says he doesn't have any. Gets given the form. And fills it out. Of course like a fucking idiot my 16 year old best friend put his actual birth date on the form. Don't underestimate the stupidity of someone who is intent on breaking the law. Fortunately in the case of my my mate the bottle shop knew and didn't care that we were underage. The signed form was all theater. They didn't even look and sold him a carton of 24 beers and we got thoroughly sauced. See if the terrorist slips up. 
Some people are stupid. And that includes some terrorists. But mostly, it exists to generate a charge that can be more easily proven if they have some evidence of terroristic activity but not enough to convict. This gives the government an excuse to hold someone while they develop their case. That's US regulatory bodies at work. They also ask if it's legal for you to buy a gun on the form you fill out to buy a gun. Same reason the security clearance form asks if you've ever attempted or are planning to overthrow the US government by force. It's a question that takes up maybe a quarter of an inch in space on a multi-page document, but can be used later on in court to say, see they lied. Can't be mad if you didn't ask. Probably because there's a law someplace that says that those who intend to commit terrorism or genocide are not allowed to enter. So whoever put the form together had to come up with a question to verify you aren't going to do those things. Stupid. But I'd be willing to bet that's the reason. Did you answer incorrectly op? A few years ago I was going through the process of applying for employment with the state police. I made it through a number of steps and finally got to the computer voice stress analysis. CVSA. Test one of the questions they asked was if I'd lied on any portion of the personal history statement we were required to submit. I asked if anybody ever admitted to that. At that point I had passed everything and we were just BCing a bit while waiting for my background investigator. And the guy running my CVSA told me it happened all the time. I asked what the worst admission was and he said a man told him he had in fact committed murder. He said he was shocked but took his cuffs out and put him into custody right there. People aren't always particularly bright. Edit, spelling. Very religious terrorists refuse to lie. I would hazard a guess and say that the US Gov does that so if someone with a visa comes to the states and does commit terrorism or genocide. They have official, contractual documentation stating that you did not enter the country to commit those crimes. More charges. Basically, when they get caught. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our playlists full of similar content. Epic Aircast is like doom scrolling for your ears. Please like, share, and subscribe.